Welcome to the Our Team Podcast, powered by EXP Realty. Are you an agent looking to level up? Are you someone looking to buy or sell real estate? Fantastic. This is the show for you. Thank you for joining us on the Our Team Podcast. We are back at it. I'm Brian Auer, and you are? Stephanie Winter. Stephanie Winter. How irritated do you get when people call you Winters? It just makes me wish that they wish that there was more of me. Oh. Yeah, because it's just winter, plural. Winters. Winter, just one. There's only one. one. It's just one. There cannot be more than one. Yep. This people, cannot be duplicated. People butcher my name all the time. I don't think the, the world could handle more than one. Definitely not. I can barely handle myself. Right? Right. Right. Yeah. No, I think it's good that there's only one. Yeah. Stephanie I, I th- Winter. I think as a fully charged extrovert, I, I, don't, I don't know. There's more than enough. What are we talking about today? Um, I think we should talk about buying and selling a house in today's market. Maybe trying to do contingent transactions or congruent okay. transactions. Let's talk about it. Why don't, yeah. you, why don't you lead the way? Um, okay. So I have a couple of clients right now who own a home and they mm-hmm. want to buy another house. And okay. what is the best process for doing that? Okay. Right? So I have a buyer. They came to me. Um, they want to buy a new home, get closer to their kids, or their kids want to buy a home. And this is the most affordable area. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense that they sell their home to buy a home here. Um, so what's the best process for doing that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, they were considering, um, you know, they have enough equity in their home that they could buy their next property, but they've not taken that equity out of their home or redefined that equity to make it available yet. So what would have happened is when I met them to show them the house that they were very interested in, because they had not taken those financing steps just yet, it's likely that they would have missed out on the property. Fortunately, it wasn't a good fit. It wasn't the right timing. Um, And I had a great conversation with them where they've lived in their home for 20 years. They were thinking that they would rent it out as a property. Mm -hmm. And I had to say, I wouldn't recommend that. And that's pretty crazy because when I got into real estate in 2014, I was... I love the idea of building generational wealth, You're right. right? You get into real estate, it's the best long-term investment. You get one, you take out a home equity line of credit, and then you make your property a rental property and you keep stacking and you build mm-hmm. your real estate portfolio. In 2014, that was the idea. Well, now their thought process was, well, we'll rent out our home. Mm-hmm. And I had to say, can I tell you why I don't recommend that? Why didn't you recommend that? So the reason I don't recommend renting out your house and the reason I would recommend cashing out equity is I asked them, have you been property managers before? Mm-hmm. No. Have you owned property, been a property manager in California before? No. Okay. Well, the investors that I follow and listen to and the financial gurus that I've been listening to for several years, um, they don't invest in California mm-hmm. anymore. So what's going to happen is you might put a renter in and our laws are becoming increasingly more tenant friendly. Mm-hmm. So it's really not become a safe state to buy an investment property unless you're experienced and you're willing to take that risk. Right. So I kind of okay. feel like it's a moderate investor type market. Plus it's been their family home for 20 years. Yeah. So worst case scenario is you pull the money out and you think you're keeping this property because you have an emotional attachment to it, mm-hmm. right? It's been your family home. But once it becomes a rental, it's not your family home anymore. It's now a business. It's a gener- It's a business yeah. that needs to generate a profit. And if it's not generating money, and you don't know what's going to happen in the state of California, if my financial guru investor is taking all of his money out of California and moving it to Florida for rentals, and did that several years ago, and I listened to a podcast, and he said, the rules of engagement in California have changed. Definitely, especially since COVID. Yeah. And this was like in 2016, 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, he goes, the rules of engagement have changed. Yeah. And that statement stuck with me. Um, and There are, to be clear, there are still plenty of people that are buying rentals here in California because they're needed. And so it is, it is still a very viable thing to do if you're an investor is to, to buy the right kind of properties here. But I think if – Knowing their situation, you probably gave them some very sound advice because mm-hmm. of their their situation. Um, but I still am that guy that says, if you don't need to sell, if you can hold on to this asset and rent it out, then please do because you do build generational wealth that way. And you know, fine, take take a bunch of money out of it, buy another property, and you know you you can leverage it in a lot of ways. You don't and- have to you don't have to keep it, but. 
if you can keep it and just leverage it a different way to buy more properties, then that's a great way. So, but in their situation, may, maybe not. But I'll tell you one game that still works really well. And again, it depends on the area, but uh, short term rentals are killing it in California. The Airbnb market? Yep. Well, Wait. short term rental because oh. Airbnb and VRBO basically. Yeah. Even, even, um, Envoy has their, you know, it's a it's a Marriott product that's starting to really pick up. Yeah. So, I mean, if your home is in a a neighborhood that doesn't have an HOA, and it's in a part of town where there's a lot to do, and you market it correctly uh, as a short term rental, you can quadruple what you would make with a long term tenant. And I mean quadruple. If the rents would be, say, 3000 a month, you could probably easily do 12000 a month. But again, you're going to, you know, it's, it takes work because if you're going to manage that yourself, I mean, it's it's not easy. Yeah. And I mean, that was my question for them was like, are you prepared to be property managers right. in the state of California? And if do you understand not, then, what that entails? Yeah. And if you're, if you're wanting to be a property manager, mm -hmm. if you want to start a rental portfolio and that's your goal, mm -hmm. then I would cons recommend considering pulling all of your equity out of what has been your family home for 20 years, yeah. buying your replacement property, and then getting on an online message board like Bigger Pockets mm -hmm. and finding a group of investors who are finding other places in the United States to invest in. Yeah. If your goal is to be a property manager and, you know, have a have a rental property, then I would recommend and it's been your family home for 20 years that you're emotionally attached to, yeah. I would recommend just cashing out, you know, leaving that prop leaving the memories and the property, mm -hmm. drawing the line and then moving forward in your next season of yep. life. And if your next season of life includes you wanting to be a real estate property manager, then I would suggest getting onto an online message board such as Bigger Pockets, joining a forum, and then learning how to invest through that. Right. Yeah. That's that's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. It really does depend on the situation. But so in this in this case they've got a house to sell. Mm-hmm. Using your examples, they, they have a house to sell, they want to buy here. Um, I think they really need to talk to an agent that knows how to arrive at value of their home, mm -hmm. figure out what their payoff is. That mm -hmm. way they kind of know at the end of the day, here's a net sheet we can provide you so you know what you're going to end up with when this is done. Mm -hmm. You can also use that net sheet as proof of funds when mm -hmm. you're writing offers. Mm -hmm. um, because that's going to be the cash that you come in with. So if you're qualified, if you're buying a million dollar home, you're selling a six hundred thousand dollar home, you're going to end up with four hundred thousand net from that. After all expenses, you mm -hmm. now have your proof of down payment, right? Or proof of you know that's part of your proof of funds. Mm -hmm. So um, is that kind of where you were going with that on the steps? Or yeah, I recommended you know first things first, talk with a lender because mm -hmm. whether you're planning to keep this as a rental or you're planning to sell it, you, that's two different strategies for financing definitely right like you can't just go make a cash offer on a property and then pull the equity out of your house it's right. not that simple yeah. you actually have to do the step of deciding okay what am i going to rent my property for and then that includes then then your lender considers that as income yeah moving forward and lenders also look at it is this your first property or do you have a history of property management mm -hmm. because they may not approve you if you don't have a history of property management to have that as considered income to credit towards your next loan right so there's a lot of different moving factors there's a lot of different oh, moving yeah. parts but nothing happens until you talk to a lender right bottom line to yeah. find out and i you know we might have to make the offer contingent or are you do you qualify for a bridge loan mm -hmm. and the other thing is that with the lending industry, they come out with new products and new ways to loan you money every single day. Yeah. Right. They want to loan you money. They want to give you the loan. They want you to borrow the money at an interest rate for sure. and pay it back more than you borrow. Yep. So they're always finding ways to facilitate that for people. We're in a transaction right now where the, the, they do need to sell their home. Um, but they got a bridge loan because they want to, they want to secure their, their property first and then we're going to sell their home. And so they, they, it was very important to them. They, they, they knew they were not going to get their dream home, which is this very specific property. And by the time we got around to selling their home, it, there's just not enough time to do it. So they were going to lose out on their dream home. So mm -hmm. we suggested, well, you could get a bridge loan. Yeah. And, and they, they were like, really? And we connected them so with them. We connected them with a really good guy that does bridge loans and it was like smooth as butter <laughs> so, Perfect. so um that is another way the typical way though is to 
you know, get your home on the market mm -hmm. and get it into escrow before you really start the search. That Be is the big factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's stacking the dominoes because, yeah. you know, as a seller, as a homeowner, you don't want to sell your home before you know where you're going to go next. So right. people get really hesitant about that. Yeah. But the reality is, a seller isn't going to accept your offer as a buyer and assume all of the liability that you have to take on as a seller for whichever buyer you choose. Mm -hmm. So the sooner that you can choose a buyer and really because we're still in a seller's market, the seller has all the leverage. Yeah. So the idea is for someone who wants to buy a new home and sell their current home is to actually put their home on the market first because the inventory is so low and it is a seller's market. They need to put their home on the market first, attract a buyer, get that buyer into escrow and through their inspections as far as they can while that seller is making offers on the property that they want to purchase. Right. Yep. Because if, if I'm a seller and I'm looking at offers coming in mm -hmm. and I see somebody that wants to make a pretty good offer on my house, but um, unfortunately, their house is not even on the market yet, then if, not only are they contingent, but they're in a bad way contingent because mm -hmm. they have to get their home on the market. That takes a week, mm -hmm. right? Getting it ready, getting good photos, video, all the, the to different do it right. Assets yeah, to if you right. rush the process, you're just, there's no. Mm -hmm. That's going to take time. And yeah. then they have to have some market time for it to syndicate and get out there. And mm -hmm. then possibly a couple open houses, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I got to verify if they're pricing it right so I can get a feel for if, you know, is it even, a, 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 you know. Is, are they, they realistic on their pricing? Right. Or are they going to price it where that they're going to get an offer very quickly? Mm -hmm. So if I'm being honest, that's not a really good, I mean, there's levels. It's one, one thing to say you're a contingent. Because if you're getting a loan, you are contingent with the loan. Mm -hmm. So they're contingent there. They're contingent with the sale. There, there's too many contingencies for it to really be a good offer. Those are bad terms. Mm -hmm. So if, if you want to strengthen your, your offer, then your house needs to be on the market, preferably in escrow, and even better, preferably with contingencies removed on their end. Mm -hmm. So that way they're they're just a strong buyer. They can come in and say, our house is already in escrow. Our buyers have already removed their contingencies. We're just waiting for it, to, you know, everything to, to close. Mm -hmm. And so then that's a pretty strong offer. So, yeah. you know, but that, so if you're a seller, you need to make sure that you, you don't get too crazy looking until you get to that point. Mm -hmm. Because you, you're, you're not going to be homeless if you're working with a good agent. You're going to accept an offer contingent upon finding a suitable replacement. Yes. So no matter what. And we have contracts okay. in place to protect the seller from selling their house before having a place to go. That's right. You're not going to be homeless with my team, that's for sure. Because we're really good at, at content, you know, dealing with those things and doing concurrent closes. Mm -hmm. Um, doing seller uh, in possessions and all kinds of creative stuff. So, you know, if, if you're listing and selling your home and you're concerned that you're not going to be able to find a house, well, as a seller right now, you have a lot of control. Yes. A lot of control. Well, that's so, where all the leverage is in yeah. being a seller. So as a buyer, so when you're on the seller side, you have all the leverage mm -hmm. and the buyer is at your mercy that's or right. your whim as to what your terms are so that you can move forward because mm -hmm. it's a housing shortage. That's right. So that buyer is lucky that yep. they got their offer accepted. And they're going to have to deal with it. And they're willing to wait with you knowing that they have their home versus going back out every weekend Mm -hmm. with their agent having to make offers and maybe getting beat out. Right. So a buyer is willing to be patient with a seller if it means that that buyer is going to get that home and they don't have to go out every weekend and keep making offers. Exactly. Right. If they have to extend escrow by a couple of weeks while you still look for a home, that that buyer should be okay with that. Mm -hmm. That's why we do this first. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's... That's good. I wonder, there could be a lot of sellers listening to this right now or homeowners that are thinking about selling that, that don't realize that it's not as hard as you think. If As long as you get your house out there on the market, get it in escrow, you're, you're, you're a solid buyer. And guess what? You can pull out if you don't find the home. If we're, we're making this. The more dominoes you can stack mm -hmm. when you make the offer to the per property you want to purchase and that seller can look back at your track record and go, okay, you've done all the groundwork to make it easy for me to accept this offer from you. Right. Because there have been multiple times where sellers are like, I really like you. I yeah. really like your client. I really like your offer. 
uh, but right. we got another offer that's not contingent. Yeah. Well, there's another thing you can do to really strengthen it. Is you don't just make the offer that you're accepting uh, contingent on finding suitable replacement. Because you'd have to remove that contingency eventually on your buyer. Mm -hmm. or, you know, your buyers can require that. You can make it contingent on you finding suitable replacement and closing. We have one of those right now. We do. We have two of them because we have huh. one. Oh, great. So you have one and we I have, have one. one. You have one. So and because, you know, what if at the very last minute your loan doesn't go through? then guess what? You don't have to sell your house to that buyer that's been waiting all that yeah. time. You're still protected. So anyway, be of good cheer because even in a market like this, if you're considering selling your home, there's ways of doing it where you're totally protected because you've got all the leverage. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So work with someone that you trust who can manage your expectations and tell you the hard truth, even if it's not what you want to hear. Yeah. And that's where I really well, want to have this conversation on a podcast. Cause yeah. like if one person hears this before and it shifts their mindset so that they can be more successful, yeah. right? Cause all we're losing is time yeah. when you're trying to do, when someone's trying to do this by skipping steps. Right. Right. So all you're losing is time and time is the most valuable resource that we have. So yep. yeah. Cool. Well, if anyone is considering selling, they should just call you. Yeah, I can help with that. Because you're incredible at it. Yeah. We'll buy, we'll sell, That's hang right. out, tell some bad jokes. How can people get a hold of you? 951-259-0755, um, stephwinterhomes.com. Winter, no S, homes with an S. Steph, S-T-E-P-H. Winter like the season, homes with an S dot com. So the way you spelled that out, there's a lot of things in there to help people remember mm -hmm. what you just said. So that's good. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Well, we can be done. Thank you very much for all that info. And it was good chatting with you about this. And uh, for those of you uh, who have lasted all the way to the end of this, thank you very much. Hey, yeah. wait, before you go, you would you do us a favor? If you found any value in this content, would you please like and subscribe to it? Maybe even leave a comment. It really helps us out.